Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that you've given us. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for taking care of each one of us throughout this entire week. And we surrender the word that is going to be taught into your hands. And we pray that you help us to bear fruit, that your word bears fruit a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, last Sunday, we were learning about the fifth part of the plan of God. Okay, the restoration. Do you remember that? Yes? So, do you remember the difference between the beginning of the world and the end of the world? Yeah? So, do you remember the memory verse? <laughs> what is it? Revelation? Okay. For the old, for the first, passed away. Also, just must see. Nice. Who took the initiative to study first? You. And you were teaching both of them. Only now I'm hearing his voice. Good. Now, today we will start learning more about the end time events. As tra traditionally understood. Okay? So in Matthew 24, Jesus' disciples ask him about what will be the signs of his return and the end of the age. Can you go to Matthew 24? Verse 3. Twenty-four, verse three. Okay. Are you all there? Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, "Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age?" Did you understand that? Huh? His disciples are asking, when will all this happen? The end and end of the age. And what is the sign? What will be the sign that it is going to happen? So how do you know it is going to rain? When you see the clouds, it's a sign, right? And uh, what do you call it? How do you know that it is not going to rain? When it's clear sky. So it's a sign again. So just like the disciples are asking, uh, will there be a sign for your coming and the end of the age? Okay. So Jesus explains the beginning of the end time events as the beginning of birth pains. Do you know what birth pains are? Um, have you seen that when uh, women are pregnant, when they're going to have a baby, they start to have very bad tummy pain? Have you seen that? Yes, so those are called birth pains. What happened? <laughs> you both have seen it, but you have also seen it in movies, right? Yes. So, you, the mama, mama will have birth, I mean, very bad tummy pains. Those are called birth pains. You can't explain those pains. So, <clears throat> Jesus explains the beginning of the end time events as the beginning of birth pains. See, when, you have, when mama has birth pains, that means it is time for a baby to be born. Right? So that's what Jesus is saying. The beginning of end time events will be like the birth pains. Because something different, something new is going to happen. <clears throat> as when a woman goes into labor. That means as when a woman is going to, as when a woman is going to have a baby. And starts having labor pains. That is birth pains. Labor is called birth pains. Okay? Am I confusing you? No. Am I confusing you? Okay. Labor pains when ready to deliver her baby. The beginning of birth pains starts with wars, famines and earthquakes around the world. Like when someone is pregnant and when they're going to have a baby, they have tummy pain, right? But the world, you know how the birth pains are? There will be wars. You know what wars are? There will be famines. Do you know what famine is? Famine is there's no food. Okay, they can't grow crops. Only if you grow crops will you get rice and wheat and everything, right? Grains. 
they can't grow crops because there's not enough rain or there's too much of rain and there's too much of flood and everything gets washed away is is too much of rain good for growing something too much of water good is too much of sun good there should be a balance so when something like that happens also or if a hurricane comes and if all the crops are pulled out will you get crops so like that you will not get crops you will not get food so then you start having a famine famine is you won't have food and then earthquakes you know what earthquake is yes so these are birth pa pains in the <clears throat> world these are the signs okay so it's like the earth is crying with wars and these are the birth pains and these are the signs that something new is going to happen now you're all in matthew 24 right can you go to four to verses four to seven are you there and jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceives you you know what deceive is no no one tricks you for many will come in my name in whose name in the name of jesus saying i am the christ and will deceive many so jesus is saying be careful that no one tricks you because a lot of people will come and say that i am christ okay and they will deceive many that means a lot of people will get tricked thinking that that person is jesus so that is also going to happen and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars rumors of wars means you it's like gossip you will hear that oh there might a war might happen over here okay so you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet so what jesus is telling you is there will be people who will come to trick you and say that i am christ but don't believe them and you will hear of wars and rumors that there might be a war but then don't be troubled because all this should happen but it is not the end of the age yet for nation will rise against nation and the kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places do you understand so far now the duration of these birth pains is thought to cover the first 3.5 years of Daniel's 70th week. In the book of Daniel, Daniel gets as a crazy gets a revelation of the end of time. Okay? So he talks about 70 weeks. So this is about that. The birth pangs is thought to cover 3.5 years of Daniel's 70th week. So Daniel uh, he gets a revelation that after 70 weeks this will happen. So the birth pangs talk about suppose this is a 70 weeks so birth pangs is what was what is it was without food what what is that word called famine and then pestilence okay and then a huh? earthquake so all these signs but it is not the end of age yet that's what Jesus said right so this is 70 weeks so what what is said is The duration of the birth pangs is thought to cover the first 3.5 years. So this is the first see um look here. So this is the first 3.5 years. This is 70 weeks. Okay? And this is the first 3.5 years. So this birth pangs is covering so much. Okay? Now Daniel the prophet prophesies in the Old Testament about a period of 70 weeks which are determined to make the end of sin and bring everlasting righteousness so when daniel gets a revelation it is what he gets is after 70 weeks something new happens it's it's the end of all bad things it's the end of the age okay so can you go to daniel 9 uh 24 Daniel 9 verse 24 This is the verse where it talks about the 70 weeks Let me know when you're there 
Nine, nine, twenty-four. Are you there? No, he's still yet to reach there. Yeah. It's done three point five years at the start. Wait, we'll just read this verse, and then you'll understand. You are you there? See, seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins. This is spoken to Daniel, okay? To make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So what, uh, what is being told to Daniel is, after after 70 weeks are determined. That means for your people. You have a period of 70 weeks. After, so within that, what do you call it? All the birth pangs, everything will happen. And to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring everlasting righteousness. So that means after 70 weeks, what is, what is going to happen? Something new is going to happen. Okay, so I'll just explain that. The 3.5 years, we'll talk about it right now. You just listen to this. And then if you still have that doubt, Tell you that later. So these birth pains start when the Antichrist, Antichrist confirms or strengthens a seven-year covenant with many. You know what a covenant is? It's an agreement. Remember I told you what a covenant is? So the birth pains start when the Antichrist, there's a person called the Antichrist, right? Confirms or strengthens a seven-year covenant, seven-year agreement with a lot of people. One week could be understood as seven years. This is where it gets a little tricky. Okay? One week, one week, you know God is not in time, right? Are you aware of that? Does God have one o'clock, three o'clock and all that? No. He stands outside of time. Okay? It's like, um, let me tell you, how does it work? When you're sitting here, can you see the planes in Nedumashiri? No. But God is up there. So, at the same time, he can see the airport here and he can see us in the hall, right? So he's outside of time. That is how he sees the beginning and the end. So when in this... Good morning. Morning, Pastor. When, when did you become a student? <laughs> <laughs> so one week could be understood as seven years. It might be seven years for us, but, but when God speaks one, says one week, it would be actually seven years. It's not, how many days are there in a week? Seven. So when someone tells us one week, we'll think seven days. But it would actually, it's actually talking about seven years. Okay, how many days are there in a year? Ah. So the Antichrist starts his reign with the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the 70th week. So remember, this is 70 weeks. So at the midpoint, he starts his reign. He starts ruling. Okay, so the birth pangs are here. So it's a beginning. Am I going backwards or is this, is this from front to back? This is this beginning, right? So the birth pangs are here. And the Antichrist starts his reign with the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the 70th week. Understood? That is 3.5 years. Understood that? Now, putting an end to sacrifice and offering. So, what does the dictionary say about abomination? You know what an abomination is? What is it? What is your understanding? Ah, good. So, it is something that will cause disgust or hatred. Something that's not good. You feel like, oh, that kind of a feeling, okay? And desolation, what does desolation mean? A state of complete emptiness or destruction. Do you understand what abomination is and this, uh, desolation? See, the Antichrist starts his reign with the abomination of desolation. So I'm explaining what that is. So abomination is that's something that causes hatred and desolation is a state of complete emptiness or destruction. So something horrible happens and you're in a position where it's all destroyed or it's completely empty. Understood? 
So the Antichrist's reign starts with the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the 70th week. That's 3.5 <laughs> years, putting an end to sacrifice and offering. Now, that you're still in Daniel 29, I mean, Daniel 9, right? Can you go to verse 27? Are you in verse 27? Then he shall confirm a covenant. What is a covenant again? Agreement. Covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to the sacrifice and offering. You remember what I said? One week may be understood as how many years? Seven years. So then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So in the Bible, when it says one week, how many years is it? Seven years. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So middle of seven years is what? Middle of seven years is what? Three? 3.5 years, yes. 3.5 years. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. See, I was explaining this verse earlier. So did you understand? I, the thing is, I'm explaining it and then telling you where, where it's written in the Bible. So you understood the explanation, right? Yes? Now, the Antichrist rule begins the great tribulation. You know what tribulation is? What do you mean by tribulation? Tribulation is a lot of trouble, difficulty. It is not peaceful. It's not peaceful. So when you're having tribulation, you, you're not have. it's opposite of peace. Whatever you do, it's trouble. So the Antichrist rule begins the great tribulation. So the minute Antichrist rules, it, it's the beginning of trouble, okay? A worldwide distress unequal to any across history. That means if the leader is not good, what will happen? Will it, the people get affected? Yes? If the leader is cruel, will the people get affected? Yes? Suppose I'm the leader and I say, you have to work from morning till night and no sleep. Won't you get affected? Yes? If I'm a good leader, I will see to it you need rest, right? So if the leader is bad, so that's what. The Antichrist rule begins with great troubles and difficulty, a worldwide distress. That means it's not just in one place, it's not just in India, not just in Europe or, you know, Australia, but it's worldwide. Worldwide distress equal to any across history. Okay, now all of you go to Matthew 24. <clears throat> So did you understand the 3.5 years thing that you asked in the beginning? Okay. Are you all at Matthew 24? Uh, verse 15 to 21. Are you there? Shall I read? So therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, you remember what abomination of desolation is? Yes? Don't remember? You do, right? Remember, he uh, discussed something that happened, which is disgusting, and what? Desolation is what? Feeling of emptiness or destruction. So, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, so Matthew is in the New Testament, right? So it's they're talking about Daniel who was in the Old Testament. Okay, so therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, so this is a warning over here. Those who are in Ju Judea, let them flee to the mountains. So these are all signs. Flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. That means let him just run. The minute he sees this, let him just run. Let him not go down and say, let, I have to pack my stuff. 
There's no time for that. It is like if you're standing on top of your house over here and if you see a tornado coming, will you say, oh, I have to go and pack up my clothes? Will you do that? You will run. That's what is being said here. So let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. That means he's out there to work. So when he sees this, should he go back and say that I have to pick, pack my stuff? No. Let him run. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. You understood that? That means it's, it's sad for those who, will, who are pregnant. That means who are going to have a baby and who have little babies on those days. Okay. Uh, where is it? Those days. And pray that your flight might not be in winter or on the Sabbath. That means the time is not fixed yet. So... They say, what is being said over here is pray that it doesn't happen during the winter or on the Sabbath. If it's in the winter, you'll be freezing. You no, know? you have to run away and you'll be freezing. So you pray that the time for this is not on any of these days. For then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. That means you would have heard of wars or troubles that people has gone through in history. You all do have heard history, right? Things, we have heard of how India was ruled by British and a lot of people had to work as slaves, the Africans, all those troubles you have heard. But this is going to be far worse than that. Far worse than whatever has happened in history. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world till this time. So this is going to be far worse than anything that has ever happened since the world has begun. No, nor ever shall be. Now the last point is, at this time, believers of God face persecution like never before. Do you know what persecution is? You will be troubled because you believe in God. Okay, they will tell you, if a... If you don't believe in God, you will be let free. You should say that you believe in this person, maybe in the devil, or I don't know who. But if you should not say that you believe in Jesus, not speak about Jesus. There are places that talk that they cannot even read the Bible. They cannot open the Bible. They, they can't sell the Bible or they can't even keep a Bible in their houses. They can't have a church. They have to have a fellowship in hiding. Because their ruler said, you cannot do that. Isn't that scary? So at this time, the believers of God face persecution like never before. So this is right now happening in certain places. So we are not aware of it. But imagine if it is happening worldwide, what will we do? Will you say then, I don't want Jesus? But they will say, we will kill you if you say that you want Jesus. So they will threaten you. So persecution like never before and go to Matthew, you're in Matthew 24, right? Now go to verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Whose name's sake? Jesus' name's sake. So Jesus is giving a warning to what is going to happen. So be prepared. That is why Jesus is saying that you should learn his words, understand his verses, his words. Because what if suddenly they say you can't take the Bible? You cannot have it at home. Then where will the verses be? Verses will be over here and here. Right? And the word will help you, will strengthen you. Right? Because they, you will, uh, well, they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations. When everyone hates you at one point, won't you say, sure, I think it was better that I didn't believe in Jesus. You will all come to a point like that. Because everyone hates you, you're being beaten, you're being hated, you're getting nothing. But then you know what will strengthen you? The promises of God. That is why I'm telling you to learn the memory verses. So those are the promises. So for next week, you're supposed to memorize Matthew 24, 9. Okay, shall we pray?
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that you've given us. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us your word, for explaining to us what is it that you wanted to, for us to understand, oh Lord Jesus. We send each one of us into your hands. We also send those children who are not here into your hands. And we pray for the protection of each one of us. And we pray that you help us to remember whatever is being taught. And, help us, and we also pray that you bless us with boldness to spread your word to those who are lost out there. You remind us as to whatever is being taught to us and that your word bears fruit a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.